Good morning, everybody. Morning, morning, morning. Um, Merry Christmas Eve. I may be brief today just because it's Christmas Eve. I can't just sit here in front of the camera, right? Um, but happy December 24th in our Lord and Savior. He is the reason for the season. We're not going for the pagan nonsense. We're not celebrating like the world who's living in darkness and yet trying to sing about a life that they know nothing about. Amen. But we are so thankful, um, so reverent, so mindful, so submitted, so attentive to the Lord, and um, just so eternally grateful for what He did and what this uh, season represents for us in Him. Um, <clears throat> so may He be glorified in all that we do and all that we say. Uh, may we be humbled yet again in every Christmas, you know, be humbled. Um, I'm hoping you're reading the gospel, the gospels outside of Christmas, but for sure at Christmas time, get in there and be reminded of why, of why, of who, of how, and all the things that make Christmas what it is to us in him. So, um, make room. From the New American Standard Bible, Luke chapter 2, verse 7. Oh, no. YouTube says that it couldn't create a live stream. I said it was live whenever I first said good morning and all, but we'll see. We might have to download it from Facebook if it'll stay with me here and, um, and upload it to YouTube later, post it, whatever you call it. And I just noticed my Wi-Fi is off on my phone. That may be why it's working, because it's on data. But, I don't I don't, who knows? Who knows? But I'm not going to stop, because, I mean, that's one that's not really where it gets viewed very much anyways. I'm just, I'm trying to have, you know, make the word reach as far as I can make it reach. So, she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I know y'all seen the meme, um, we're all just really an innkeeper who has to decide if we have room for Jesus. Um, you have room, in fact, you have a big old empty hole if you don't have them, that nothing else is gonna fit in but him. Um, amen, amen. Listen, I'm not just talking, I have been there. I've been there. I've been on that side of the fence in the darkness. And they're shown a glorious light. So, um, Billy Graham says, Jesus is bigger than life. So, when he comes into yours, there's no room for anything. That does not glorify him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you know, so that, I mean, that just shows you, and this isn't Bible uh, verbatim, but it is clear in the Bible as well, and that's where Billy got it from. I mean, he didn't just come up with this idea um, that there is no room for stuff, junk that doesn't glorify the Lord. So, um, quit pushing him back out. Um, you know, oh, I just want your salvation. I just want that ticket to heaven. I don't want you to actually come in here and take away all my fun sins. I don't want you to actually wash everything clean. Um, that's the flesh. That's the flesh, and that flesh is trying to drag you to hell. Stop it. There's no room. <laughs> There's no room. Um, when Jesus came to earth as a baby, there was no room in the inn. And people today still refuse to make room for him in their hearts. Preach Billy. Preach Billy Graham, okay? And we know he, he would. Um today still refuse to make room for him. What about you? Will you make room for him? You cannot offer him a stool in the corner of your heart. When he comes into your life, it is because you have set yourself aside as you stand in his presence. I mean, that is the way that he truly comes in. And you get a grip on that. I tried the, I tried the fire insurance. I tried to just walk the aisle, pray the prayer, and live my life and it y'all it ended in so much desperation um but praise god that now i know that now i know and 
better yet, to how how much I can appreciate now because of what I went through then by my <sighs> lukewarm, lackadaisical, um, complacency, um, unwillingness to surrender at all, a life full of things that didn't glorify him, and yet wanting to holler, um, he is mine. I wasn't his, though, so it didn't matter. Yes, he was mine. Yes, he came for all, but until you're his, that relationship is not flowing. That connection is not truly made until you're his as well. Amen? So, <clears throat> please make room for him. You cannot offer him a stool. I read that. <laughs> When he comes into your life, is because you've set yourself aside as you stand in his presence. Um, now I'm not going to read three or four sentences again. Um, it usually bears repeating, does it not? In doing so, he will sit on the throne of your life and teach you his truth. And his spirit will transform your spirit. Amen. I mean, listen... And here's the thing, people want to say, well, he's not doing that for me. Well, it's, it's not happening like that for me. Listen, folks, it's not the Lord. It's you. It's you. There's something that you've not surrendered. You've got to search. <clears throat> you got to, I mean, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Look at the things that you um, find a way to reconcile. Um, look at the things that you find a way to purchase. Look at the things that you find a way to participate in. Um with great sacrifice, with great sacrifice, you see to it that you have desires of your flesh. Um, how bad do you want? How bad do you want the desires of your spirit? Because I promise you, your spirit is thirsty and hungry for the righteousness of the one who created you. Mm. What a mouthful and so true. So, I mean, how bad do you want it is what it boils down to. And it has to be, it has to be, the Bible makes it clear. The Holy Spirit will testify it to you himself. It has to be more than anything else. That's how bad you have to want it, y'all. So he will transform your spirit. He becomes the center of life for the Christian where the mind, heart, soul, and body are focused on the glory of Christ. Are you willing he seeks and saves those who are lost in sin, according to Luke 19.10. They exchange living in sin for living in Christ. Do you hear his voice? Let me hit try again on there. Even though I'm going to be in the middle of it, I guess I shouldn't have. Just, it's got that cloud and that slash through it. I've never even seen that before. So I guess the other times that I thought that it was maybe trying to stop on me it really wasn't maybe a pause or a blink but not just straight up refusal <laughs> this morning it is refusing and good morning whoever my one viewer is I bet that's my cousin Amber <laughs> Merry Christmas Eve anyways is there room at your end for Jesus y'all I mean Listen, he takes up a lot of room. I mean, he takes up a lot of room and he deserves a lot of room. He is worthy of all that room. That room was designed for him in the first place. Um, it's not a cheap, it's not a cheap, um, trip. It's not a cheap ride. It's not a, none of that. It is an all-inclusive. It is an all-in um, sold out way of life. Let's look at Luke chapter 2. Oh, glory to God in the highest. Oh, it is. <laughs> I was just thinking, I hope this is, I knew, I felt like I knew, but anyways, this is where that is. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, YouTube, forget you too, okay? <laughs> it's still not working, y'all. So in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered, the whole inhabited world. Um, this first registration took place, which we know is, is also called a census. They're calling it registration here in this CSV version. Um, took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registers, registered, each to his own town. 
Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David. Um, of course, we know, and that is how um, um, we end up with a savior from the line of David to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son with a big old mess. <laughs> and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. So our lowly savior, feeding trough, was his first bed. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified, feared a great fear. <laughs> but they did. Can you imagine? Oh. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. The whole nation, the whole world, as it were. Um, today in the city as it is. Hello. Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Mm. You know, just picture that scene. We should we should dwell on this a whole lot more than we do. We get desensitized somehow and it's just like, oh yeah, baby in a manger. Um, we take it for granted, y'all. We take it for granted. We forget the miracle, the splendor, the absolute all striking brilliance of our king. I mean mm, suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying glory a heavenly army the footnotes say saying glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors peace on earth to people he favors mm. that just puts tears in my eyes and chills all up and down just, oh, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, <laughs> the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Hallelujah. I mean, and what? Come on, we know this. We know this to be, this is history of history. This is his story and we know this. You know, there's there's so much denying, and you'll pick up a magazine. You'll go to a college class and let somebody talk you out of this. And you know, deep down, you still know. But you'd rather take that easy way that doesn't include turning from your sins and surrendering, surrendering your life. Mm. But you know, I mean, here it is. Here it is as old as any history and so much more truer. <sighs> so why do we wait? Why don't we go straight um, to where we hear that the Lord is and see what's happened, which the Lord has made known to us? Why do we put it off? And we can go. We don't have to even leave the room to go get to the Lord. Um, and that's because he came and sacrificed as he did for us. Um, can I get, can I have some peanut butter on a spoon? Yes, you can have some peanut butter on a spoon. <laughs> One of our favorite snacks. He's about to get in trouble coming here with that noisy camera, but anyways. Okay, so where did I get to? Let's go straight and see what has happened. They hurried off 
and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. I know you were, sister. I know you were. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. And that's the thing about the Word of God. It is always going to be just as we have been told. And it's all right here. If it's not right here, it's in it's it's in us when the Holy Spirit comes in and and, uh, and you know removes the blinders and lets us see the light, the glorious light. So when the eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived. And when the days of their purification, according to the law of Moses, were finished, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male be dedicated to the Lord. And that's found in, um, is that e? yeah, that's found in Exodus 13. <clears throat> And to offer a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, according to Leviticus 5 and 12. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to Israel's consolation, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death, before he saw the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, he entered the temple when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform for him what was the customary under the law. Simeon took him in, up in his arms, praised God, and said, Now, Master, you can dismiss your servant in peace as you promised, for my eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people Israel. Mm. A light of revelation for the nations and glory to your people. His father and mother were both amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and told them and told his mother Mary. Indeed, this child is destined to cause the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed, and a sword will pierce your own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The schemes. Oh, there was a, also a prophetess, Anna, um, a daughter of the... Okay, if it was Samuel, so Faneuil, um, of the tribe of Asher. She was well along in years, having lived with her husband seven years after marriage, and was a widow for 84 years. She did not leave the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayers. And at that very moment, she came up and began to thank God and speak about him to all who were looking forward to the redemption of, of Jerusalem. Um, she was a widow until the age of 84. Okay. When they had completed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The boy grew up and became strong, filled with wisdom, and God's grace was on him. Every year, his parents traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When he was 12 years old, they went up according to the custom of festival. Oh, goodness, excuse me, my nose is itching. And this is funny that this is coming up today, because, you know, yesterday, <laughs> as a joke, I said that would be what I asked him. Why didn't you just let them know where you were? Like, why didn't you just take them to the temple with you? Um, that story always gets me to, to think about a caravan traveling and realizing... We left Jesus. We left Jesus behind in the city. And he's only 12. Um, oh, goodness. 
So after those days were over, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming he was in the traveling party, they went a day's journey. A whole day they traveled. Y'all, uh, excuse me. I guess it's time trying to drip, and it's, I don't know. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, see Jerusalem? Apparently it was a really big city even then. Um, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all those who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked them. Didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Isn't it crazy how God just can straight up tell you something and did so many times in the Bible and then they turn around and not understand? Um, you know, like the disciples. I mean, Jesus laid it out for them what was going to happen to them and stuff and then they still try to like rebel against that like Peter like no you know and cutting off the guy's ear and all that um, knowing that they'd already been told and how often do we I mean we know we've already been told and we still bump our own heads as they say um, and they're confused like he said like it says they didn't understand what he said to him like why didn't you an angel came and told you you were gonna have that baby when you had not even been with anybody, so it was uh, the Holy Spirit who impregnated you. Like, how could you not understand when he called God his father, right? Um, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother kept all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with people. So that was chapter two. That was a pretty lengthy chapter, and I guess... Well, no. I was going to say, I guess Luke just is some pretty lengthy chapters, but not necessarily. So chapter 3 tells us about John the Baptist going before him, crying out in the wilderness. Um, it tells us about Jesus being baptized and the Holy Spirit um, appearing to descend on him like a dove and um, hearing the Lord's voice out of heaven saying, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. He gives his genealogy. Um, you know, we see Jesus um, led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. Um, yes, the Spirit will lead you to be tempted by the devil. It's growth. It's growth. It's growth. Um, like I said, I guess I'm going to be brief today, being Christmas Eve. And, you know, not wanting to really hop past the wonder and joy and amazement of Christmas that we just read about in Chapter 2 there. And, of course, you can find it. Um, Luke seems to be the one that's always used for the Christmas story, so I guess it's considered like the best um, rendition of it, I guess. Uh, anyways, but of course it is in some of the other, let's see. I think it's in Matthew and Mark, but not John, I mean. Is that it? Anyways, yeah, the Nativity of Christ in Matthew 1 um, in Mark probably one also um, I guess I'm just trying to just kind of flip it a little and see and no Mark begins with a I don't know Mark begins with uh, John the Baptist and then the baptism of Jesus. So, I mean, by while still in chapter 1, he's driving out an unclean spirit. So, hush my mouth. Maybe Mark's 
the one that's on it. I was thinking there was just one of them that didn't include it. And it may be just not in order there. John, John the Baptist's testimony, the Lamb of God. No, okay, maybe not. Maybe it's just Matthew and Luke. Listen, I'm no expert for sure. Um, anyways, get, you know, take time with them. Take time with them. Be, be like, oh, hi, Miss Sherry. I just looked and saw all that. Let me see what you said. Say a prayer for my mother. I sure will, ma'am. Oh, goodness. The next time we get away. Okay, sweetheart. I surely will. And I've got this darn comment. Oh, well. Fix me get off here anyway, so that will just be that. Um, anyways, stay like a child. And, you know, that's where that first childlike faith comes from, right? Um, just hearing that story of baby Jesus and believing. Um, and keeping that, keeping that near. Keeping that... Um, at the forefront of your mind, keeping it alive in you and, um, you know, keeping the joy alive, kindling the fire. I don't know. Um, it's just important. It's important every day, but especially in this season and especially with all the deception out there of what Christmas can be about that, that it shouldn't be. I mean, oh. I was, what I, okay, if you're not going to celebrate Jesus, don't celebrate it. Um, of course, I mean, I'm not anybody's boss. But that's my take on it. And um, so as a Christian, as a Christian who I generally tend to, it seems, be um, speaking towards, right, as I feel led, and I guess that is my thing, is to admonish and encourage fellow believers, um, followers of the way of the Lord Jesus, make it all about Him. Be intentional. We have to be intentional with our faith, with this walk, um, and shutting out the things that are not. Like, uh, like Billy Graham said, there's no room in your life, Christian, for anything that does not glorify the Lord. So let it all be glory. May He be pleased with the meditations of your heart, with the words of your mouth at all times. Um, and I just wish y'all a Merry Christmas in the Lord, that it be all about Him, that your faith be renewed in Him, that your relationship with Him be fresh and new, and that He just breathe a fresh breath of life through the Holy Spirit on you um, that will carry you through, that will pick you up out of a mess that you might be in, whatever your situation that you'd remember he's the answer. He's got the answers. He is the problem solver. He is the way maker. And nobody else, nobody else can fill that void but him. So, um, y'all have a merry, happy Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, Miss T.I. Good to see you. Um, be encouraged in the Lord. Seek him while he may be found. Y'all, I mean, I say it every day, but listen, time is short. Time is so short. Um, and you think about these seasons and these changes and um, you've got Jubilee, you've got um, the feasts and all these different things that you consider. Even just like we were talking yesterday about how there was 14 generations between each. Um, oh, where were we? You know what I'm talking about. How numbers are important with the Lord. He is a God of order and a God of numbers and um, structure. And there's significant dates. There's significant seasons and times. And um, the end is upon us. The end is upon us. Closer every day. Closer every day. And listen, like I say all the time, if it's not um, for the whole world, it is for you and me and the next person coming soon. And we don't know even how soon. Just like when we don't know when he is coming to the world, we don't know when we're going to him. Um, and we got to be ready, be ready, be ready. Get ready, be ready, stay ready, right? In the Lord Jesus. Um, and the power of his might. 
uh, walking in his spirit, abiding in him. So y'all just, like I said, be encouraged. Be encouraged this Christmas and always. May it just all be about him. And if it's not, you just don't want no part of it. May he strengthen you, but for his service alone. If you're not going to serve him, may you be weak. <laughs> I mean, let me just say that. May your strength, you know, I'll last when I bless my food. Lord, for the nourishment of my body, for your service. If I'm not going to serve you, don't even strengthen me. Don't even let it. Um, what do I need nour nourishment for if I'm going to waste it, right? So, um, y'all have a great one. I love you, and Jesus loves you more than you can possibly imagine. So, um, taste and see that the Lord is good. Go find out. Seek him um, with your whole heart, and you will find him. And if he's willing, I'll see y'all um, probably very briefly <laughs> uh, Christmas morning as well, or sometime tomorrow for sure. Like I said, Lord willing. So be blessed.